Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. I'm Chris Rycroft, and this video will look at how to compare different polynomial approximation schemes to continuous functions. We'll introduce the idea of the Lebesgue constant, which is a quantitative way that we can compare one polynomial interpolation scheme to another one. So in the previous video, we've seen that our choice of interpolation points can have a huge effect on the accuracy of our polynomial approximation Pn to our continuous function f. And we saw that the choice of Chebyshev points was particularly good across a broad class of functions. But this choice was really motivated by looking at our error bound between our function f and the interpolating polynomial Pn. And this error bound depends on our specific choice of f. And so we could also ask ourselves if, there, if there's a way to compare different interpolation schemes that's independent of the function that we're approximating. And in this video, we're going to look at how to do that. And we'll make use of this fundamental idea of the Lebesgue constant. So let script x be a set of interpolation points x0, x1, up to xn, defined over an interval from a to b. And we're going to define the Lebesgue constant, lambda n of script x, to be the maximum over all x in a to b of the sum from k equals 0 to n of the magnitude of lk of x. And here, lk of x is the Lagrange interpolant for the kth interpolating point xk. So it's not immediately obvious why this definition is useful, but we'll see in the next few slides that it turns out to be very effective for telling us about interpolation accuracy. And one thing that we can look at is that we can also see that the Lebesgue constant has to be greater than or equal to 1 for any set of interpolation points. And one way we can do this is by taking one of our interpolation points, for example, x0, and plugging it into our sum here. And we know that L0 of x0 is equal to 1, whereas Lk of x0 is equal to 0 for all other k. And that then tells us that that sum will actually evaluate to 1 for this value of x equal x0. And since in our Lebesgue constant we're taking a maximum over all of the x that includes x0, we know therefore that our Lebesgue constant has to be greater than or equal to the specific value of 1. So we can now think of polynomial interpolation as an operator, in, that takes us from the family of continuous functions on a to b to the family of nth degree polynomials on a to b. And here, in of a function f is the polynomial interpolant corresponding to f based upon our specific set of interpolation points, script x. And you can actually convince yourself here that this interpolation operator is linear. And if we look at applying our interpolation operator to some linear combination of continuous functions, then we'll see that that's actually equivalent to the linear combination of interpolation operators applied to those constituent functions. And the reason why the Lebesgue constant is useful is that it actually bounds what we would refer to as the operator norm of In, which we can define as the supremum over all functions that are continuous in the interval from a to b of the infinity norm of in of f divided by the infinity norm of f. And we can actually now look that this is going to always be less than or equal to this Lebesgue constant. So let's now look at establishing this result. So let's look now at the infinity norm of in of f. And so we can first just expand the definitions. So what we'll first do is we'll write this as the infinity norm of the sum 
of our f of xk multiplied by our Lagrange polynomials lk. And we can write out the infinity norm specifically, so we're taking here a maximum over all x in this interval from a to b of this magnitude of the sum of our f of xk multiplied by our lk. And we can now bring that magnitude uh, sign into our sum, and that will give us a bound on the previous expression. So we can now say that what we had is less than or equal to the maximum over all x in the interval from a to b of the sum of the magnitude of each f of xk multiplied by the magnitude of each lk. And we can now replace each of those f of xk with the largest sample. And that allows us then to pull a term out of this sum, which is the maximum over all of the interpolation points of f of xk in magnitude, multiplied now by the sum of the lk in magnitude. And if we now look at this maximum, we're taking a maximum of function values over a specific set of points in this interval from a to b. And so that will be bounded by the infinity norm of f itself. So we can also now bound this by the infinity norm of f. And we're left also now with the maximum over the interval from a to b of that sum from k equals 0 to n of the magnitude of those Lagrange interpolants lk. And that expression we can write as the Lebesgue constant. So we're left with that this is equal to the infinity norm of f multiplied by the Lebesgue constant. So rearranging, it tells us that the ratio of the infinity norm between i of f and f is less than or equal to the Lebesgue constant. And since this is true for any function, we can conclude that the supremum of that ratio of infinity norms is less than or equal to the Lebesgue constant. So we've established this result. It still seems rather abstract, but now we'll look at why it's relevant to polynomial interpolation error. And we actually find that the Lebesgue constant can allow us to bound the interpolation error in terms of the smallest possible error possible in the set of all polynomials of nth degree, capital P of n. So let Pn star in capital Pn be the best infinity norm approximation to our function f. So we don't know exactly what this is, but we can say that there should be such a member. And we can define it so that the infinity norm between f and pn star is less than or equal to the infinity norm between f and any other polynomial w. And there are several facts that we know about pn star. Firstly, we know that as n tends to infinity, the infinity norm between pn star and f will tend to zero. And we also know that pn star is unique. And in general, pn star is actually rather difficult to, to find. So we'll now look at establishing this property that the infinity norm of pn star minus f goes to zero as n increases. And this is actually a result from real analysis, referred to as the Weierstrass approximation theorem. And there are several different methods to prove this theorem, but here we're going to look at one that's based on a particular special family of polynomials referred to as the Bernstein polynomials. So the Bernstein polynomials are defined on the interval from 0 to 1, and we define b m comma n of x to be equal to the combinatorial factor n choose n multiplied by x to the m times 1 minus x to the n minus m. And from here, for a continuous function f, in the interval from 0 to 1, we can define the Bernstein approximate polynomial as bn of f of x is equal to the sum from m equals 0 to n of f evaluated m divided by n times bm comma n of x. So using a uniformly sampled set of points of f, we can multiply those by the corresponding 
Bernstein polynomials. So Bernstein polynomial approximation is in general impractical and has very poor convergence rates. However, it has robust convergence properties and we can actually show that these polynomials will converge to any continuous function in the interval from 0 to 1. And using these, we can therefore establish the Weierstrass approximation theorem. So I'm now just going to show you a few examples of, of Bernstein polynomial approximation. And in this first example here, I'm showing 50 orders of Bernstein polynomials approximating a sinusoidal function. And we can see here that these polynomials are gradually approaching our, our sine wave. But even when we look at degree 50, there's still an appreciable amount of error. Now let's look at a second case that's based on an absolute value function that has an actual non-differentiable point in it. And again, we see very slow convergence, but we do see that it is slowly approaching our absolute value function. And we're slowly getting more and more accuracy around this non-differentiable point. So if we think of the story of the tortoise and the hare, the interpolation using Chebyshev points is like the hare. It's very fast, but it might not always get us to where we want to go. Bernstein approximation is more like the tortoise. It's very slow, but you can guarantee that it will get there in the end. So now let's look at an interpolation scheme IN. And for a given function f, we'll look at how the error between IN of f and f can be related to the error between f and this best possible polynomial PN star. So if we look now at the infinity norm of f minus i n of f, we can use the triangle inequality to break this out into two components, f minus p n star and p n star minus i n of f. And since p n star is an nth degree polynomial, if we do polynomial interpolation on it, then we'll get back the same thing. So we can replace that p n star with i n of p n star. And then by linearity, we can change i n of p n star minus i n of f into the interpolation operator i n applied to the combination p n star minus f. And we can now introduce a common factor on the bottom and the top of the infinity norm of f minus p n star. And once we do that, then we now have a term that looks like our Lebesgue constant bound. And so we can say then that this would be less than or equal to f minus p n star plus the Lebesgue constant times f minus p n star. And then we can collect the common factor and say then that this would be equal to 1 plus the Lebesgue constant multiplied by the infinity norm of f minus p n star. And so we see here that the error between our function and our interpolation scheme for f is bounded by this factor of the Lebesgue constant plus 1 from the best possible interpolation error that we could hope for. Even though we don't actually know specifically what p n star is. So we therefore see that a small Lebesgue constant allows us to bound our infinity norm error of our interpolation scheme in terms of some small factor away from the best possible infinity norm error. And so now we'll take a look at how we can actually calculate the Lebesgue constant for several different sets of interpolation points. This example program, lsum.py, can be used to investigate Lebesgue constants for different interpolation points. In this program, we define a function called lsum that, that takes in a number of interpolation points in an array xp and it evaluates the sum of absolute values of Lagrange polynomials that appears in the Lebesgue constant definition. And it will return back the sum of absolute values of Lagrange polynomials at a particular value x. And so now we'll define a number of our control points, our interpolation points, and 
we'll define 16 points that are initially linearly spaced. And we now want to sample our LSUM function at a fine grid throughout our interval. So we'll introduce 500 sample points and then construct the corresponding LSUM function at those points. And we'll now plot this function using matplotlib. And if we do this for the linearly spaced grid, then we see that there's this large increase in this function at the two endpoints due to the Runge phenomenon. And in this case here, then our Lebesgue constant would be around a little over 500. So let's now move to looking at Chebyshev points instead. So we'll change this line here and sample the Chebyshev points. And if we run this program again, then we see that our LSUM function now is much smaller overall and reaches a maximum value of around 2.75, which would be our Lebesgue constant in this case. So let's now take a look at what happens if we increase the number of points. So if we now go back to the linearly spaced grid and we look at 32 control points. Then we now see that there are huge increases at the ends of the interval, up to over 10 million. If instead we look at the Chebyshev points, for this case, then we see a small increase up to a little over three, but still overall, this function is quite small. And this really highlights how the Chebyshev points are a generally effective choice of interpolation points for doing function approximation. So in the lsum.py example, we looked at graphing the sum of magnitudes of Lagrange polynomials. And from, from this graph, we can calculate the Lebesgue constant in terms of the maximum of this function. And I'm just going to recap some of these results here. So here we're going to make use of 11 points, and on the left we have the function when these points are equally spaced, and we see that in this case the function has large growth at the ends of the interval. And this is what we would expect, and it's really a hallmark of Runge's phenomenon. On the right, we're looking at using 11 points that are distributed according to the Chebyshev points, and here our function has maximum points that are much lower, and also more evenly distributed across the interval. And overall, this leads to a smaller Lebesgue constant. If we now increase the number of interpolation points to 21, then we see that the patterns become more pronounced. For the equally spaced points, our function grows rapidly at the ends of the interval, and our Lebesgue constant grows rapidly as well. For the Chebyshev points, we see the same pattern. We still see some small growth, in our Lebesgue constant, but much less than for the equally spaced points. And these patterns are also true if we now go to 31 points. And by this point, the function for the equally spaced points has grown to be very large at the two ends of the interval. So the explosive growth that we see in the Lebesgue constant for the equally spaced points is closely related to Runge's phenomenon. And it's been shown that as n tends to infinity, the Lebesgue constant for the equally spaced points will scale like 2 to the n divided by e times n times log n. And this is rather poor scaling because we have that factor of 2 to the n on top that will dominate. Correspondingly, if we look at the Lebesgue constant for the Chebyshev points, we actually see much more favorable scaling. And this is actually bounded by 2 over pi times log of n plus 1 plus 1. 
So there's an interesting mathematical problem here about what choice of interpolation points will minimize the Lebesgue constant. And while we see that Chebyshev points lead to favorable scaling of the Lebesgue constant, they're not optimal in terms of minimizing this value. And when we introduced Chebyshev points, we did so because they minimized this particular polynomial term that appears in the Cauchy approximation theorem. But that is a different construction than what we're dealing with here. Here, we're looking at this sum of magnitudes of Lagrange polynomials, and that leads to slightly different considerations. So let's summarize where we are here. So we first looked at this discrete data problem and fitting polynomials to discrete data. And we saw that we could essentially solve this problem exactly with zero error. And we saw that using Lagrange polynomials was really an effective and well-conditioned method to perform this interpolation. We've now looked at approximating functions with polynomials, and we saw that we could use the same methods from discrete interpolation just by choosing a set of interpolation points. However, we've seen that the choice of interpolation points has a large effect on the accuracy of our approximation.